I wonder now how he's going to try and get the most out of his hero. Yeah, if you wait too long, then the moment kind of passes and you get a subpar ult out there. So Jubei has to kind of call his shots in incredibly rough positions. And as you said, that feels like that's exactly the design that two based wanted. They see the Bane early. They say, we're just going to make it so that theoretically speaking, you're going to get maybe one or two fiend scripts that we won't immediately shut down. And that's the only opportunities he'll have to really be that game changer. Black and yellow, though, still leaning into the teamfight a little bit with that faceless void pick, which does get a little bit more dangerous considering the silencer's already in the field. And it's another ability for the Rubik to steal against a faceless void himself. Obviously, things get a little bit weird, but if Widge could take something like the Chronosphere, then deploy it on the rest of Black and Yellow to lock them down, you are really risky with this lineup. I can't really figure out any other way to describe it. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out, of course, Faceless Void versus Mars Rubik. It's really easy for you to time walk and shrug off a lot of the damage coming in from that lane, and it's not like you have any other heroes already picked up to really step on each other's toes, but it feels a little bit out of left field. I do like the Nyx Assassin. I think that that's a four hero that we really haven't seen all too much because even though it's still Nyx Assassin, it's something that really comes in and out of the meta as it pleases. It is very good versus both of these supports and it gives you that person who wants to start these fights and set up in lanes. And now Black and Yellow have kind of got this nice kill combo where Nyx Assassin slips out onto the map. One hero TPs in at the tower and another TPs in with the Nature's Prophet. And that's a pretty easy gank to be made. But I feel like they need a hero like a Storm Spirit, a Void Spirit. They need someone to actually provide the damage now because their control is honestly looking pretty good, but they need someone who's actually able to put that damage into the Chronosphere as well. They need one of those all-arounder type of heroes, and Naga Siren is a very, very annoying hero that they're going to have to deal with, and again, one of Boris's best. A hero he's comfortable with and a hero that can once again break up so much of what Black and Yellow are going to want to put together. If you try to jump in, if you're looking for that Chrono, if you want the Prophet to TP in, you have to be mindful of the Naga Siren's position because Song of the Siren can just sort of waste so much of your time and then two base get to decide, do we regroup and fight? Do we just want to back away and avoid this all together? You are going to have those options in a way that Black and Yellow pre-BKB just won't really be able to ignore. Yeah, and really, with Black and Yellow's pick order, I was expecting them to loop back for, like, the hero that just got banned out, the Lesh track, something like that. If I saw Lesh Jug on their pick order there, I would have been really happy with what they were obtaining, just because I think, again, this is a team that needs agency. It needs someone who's constantly able to make plays. Of course, maybe you pick up something for Samuboy Boy that has a little bit more versatility. That was an insta-lock on the Legion Commander, though. Yeah. Okay, is this gonna be a sammy boy nature's prophet now i think we'll have to wait until we see what simply two based want to pick up here but that flexibility remains now and you do dodge out that naga lane that naga lane is so bad for nature's prophet if he actually is forced to lane up there we'll have to see what zero decides to do but i almost like the decision to send this legion down there and then just send the np mid regardless of what two base end up going for for mr jeans is the storm not storm is banned out don't think they want to go for the void spirit necessarily on two base side but we'll have to see anybody who builds an orchid is incredibly strong in this game mm -hmm. yeah so the void is still going to be an option there for them uh i suppose technically speaking they could try in for something along the lines of the invoker maybe not a hero that usually builds up in that same way but you would still have some control to work with you'd have some stuff to throw into uh things like the faceless void chrono but it's going to depend on what they really uh, do want for Mr. Jeans. He is capable of playing quite a bit, but what is he going to feel sort of best on here in two base? They do have a little bit of time to think this over. 20 seconds left on the clock, so they have some time, but they have to figure out a lot right now. What is our mid matchup going to be? What hero sort of plays into some of this team fight that we've got set up so far? Yeah, I'm thinking there's the Void Spirit, the classic counter versus the Nyx Assassin. Once you get Ags, there's a hero like the Queen of Pain. But I feel like both of these heroes don't really want to play too much into the Nyx Assassin. Whoa. Okay, that's going to be... I can only imagine it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to mm -hmm. be the Mars going mid yet again. Another counter, and Sammy Boy is going to slot immediately onto that Nature's Prophet. So 
this is a very nice lane for Guts. Guts is going to be able to farm up pretty much everything he wants. We'll have to see if he goes for that early Blink Dagger or if he mirrors Sammy going for the Yules. At the same time, Valkyrie is also going to be pretty happy with his lane. Of course, now you're playing a lot less to kill Yamsun and more just farm right alongside him, but you can never force this Doom out of lane. There is just not going to be a situation where now Valkui is going to have to go jungle and have to ignore everything. I think Widge will stick with him maybe a little bit more this time around, just because I think that Boris's lane is at the same time going to be a draw as well. But we'll have to see how they decide to play it because nobody can really kill stacks in this game. It's a very interesting game because all of the supports get to be very active early on because there's really nothing better for any of them to do. Mm-hmm. Really, the only hero who could look for it is Boris, but not initially, not within the time frame that you'd actually be stacking for. So, as you said, we might see a little bit more activity from them. And I'd like to see activity from Valky on this Doom. We were talking it up when we thought he was going to be on that Mars, how it was one of his better heroes, how he tends to play a little bit better uh, on heroes that can be active. And we've seen Dooms previously in this event, ET, and it feels like a lot of them get sucked into that trap. They go for the Devour, they go for something like a Midas, and then... Yeah, they're building up, but you have lost that sort of playmaker uh, in the offlane position, so now your Doom doesn't quite do what you wanted it to in the first place. So, obviously, if Valky can find the farm, by all means, don't sacrifice that farm too much, but part of the benefit of this Doom is, you know, the Doom. It would be nice to sort of see him stay active and try to sort of uh, get that balancing act between activity and building up his own net worth. And really the big difference between this Doom pick and every other Doom pick we've already seen in this tournament is we finally have that vision being supplied by this Naga Siren. We're going to send the illusions out. We're going to get sight before we actually are forced to go for these engagements. And that's where Black and Yellow have to be so careful. As soon as a Naga Illusion is on top of you, there's always that threat of Valkyrie getting on top of you, getting the Doom out, and then you just simply die. That's where I think in the Legion Commander, almost in it, Vernley, they do have this nice setup where at the very least zero is going to be able to heal you out but aside from that it is going to be very easy for a lot of these two based heroes to track down those doom targets something that that's another aspect of a lot of these earlier doom picks everybody gets doomed and then runs away but this time around everyone's just that little bit less mobile so we might actually see someone die to this doom yeah that's always been sort of the bummer right you drop the doom down and you don't kill, you just force him out of the fight for a little while. So maybe that will change. But with that, we do get this game underway. Do also want to point out something uh, for the folks here that might have been a little bit confusing back in game one. Uh, you have Guts on the Mars. We were referring to Guts as Mr. Jeans. Uh, it is the same player, but the name change is apparently something that he is uh, officially undergoing. So Guts was or is the player formerly known as Mr. Jeans, and we're probably going to mess up and sort of swap those names back and forth a couple of times but it is the same guy just a bit of a name change there so just a heads up on that et probably won't make that mistake because he's a professional i absolutely will i mean you could barely call it a sword it was more like a hunk of iron but it is going to be interesting to see uh why why the choice even in the first place but there is a sven set after that series so you gotta love it but I think uh, in this uh, mid lane, at, least, at the very least, should be having a pretty free time. I, again, I'm very intrigued to see whether or not he goes for that blank first, because I think that really is the key for a lot of these Mars is to get the game started. Yeah, and when we saw Sammy on that Mars earlier, that sort of blink dagger play was initially working out pretty well for him. Things sort of got more complicated as the match goes on, but just being able to be that sort of playmaking hero even from the middle lane which i think for guts will be more important if we come down to a scenario where valky's doom does not pick up the activity level in the way i had sort of been saying that i wanted to see from him so well, we'll see what guts chooses to do right now though he is just suffering a little bit of early damage this is always the problem the nature's prophet mid it's a ranged hero who can just throw out the damage and you need to be able to get through these treants as well that's something that at the moment the mars is not doing perfectly but it doesn't really matter too much it's a little bit of damage from the trance but it'll never prevent him from getting too many of these last hits 
Yeah, more annoyingly, I think it's just the treants going mm -hmm. to the rune spots. Yeah, he denied all the water wow. runes. Nothing in case Guts was actually able to get that bottle out towards him a little bit earlier than he expected. But I can also imagine that Sammy's going to throw another treant over towards that bounty rune once that comes up as well. So defending these runes is probably worth the rotation if you're the Rubik in this game, just because he is going to be as obnoxious as possible on this NP. I wonder if Guts is actually going to get a point up in the bulwark. Sammy went for one, of course, because he was landing versus a wind, but it might be a value skill point considering that he is just going to get clicked over and over again. Yeah, normally you don't care too much about the bulwark, but with Sammy on this Nature's Prophet, it bears a little bit more consideration, that's for sure. But as of right now, level 3, not going for it, and for now this lane's going to be, I'd say, relatively stable, but over in some of those side lanes, want to check in on Yamson on this Faces Void, going to play an exceptionally large role in the game plan for Black and Yellow. You can't really get a Faces Void who won't be the focal point of your lineup, but I want to see if they actually choose to get aggressive. Jubei's coming in here, and they could look for something, but they actually decide not to pull the trigger on that one. Nightmare with the Faces Void is always kind of a weird spot, right? Because Jubei has to basically remove it himself, otherwise the Yamson doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward. It has the Cloak Aura as well, so you're receiving even less damage from that time lock if you do end up getting bashed. It's not something that Valkui is going to keep for necessarily a very long time, but this is also just Widge and Valkui pulling the wave consistently back, and Jubei wants to trade with Yamsun. He's not going for the pull just yet. He's going to make a motion over there now, but sees there's no large camp, so we'll have to see how this Bane actually decides to play. And you see that Widge doesn't even mess around by stacking the uh, large camp. Guts? But guts, yeah. Ooh. Dangerously low. Sammy, don't, hold on, Guts, I don't know about that one. He's going to double back a little bit, but the Prophet is still there. But with the bottle charges, looks like he is going to be okay for now. But if he takes the long route back to lane, you see little Nick? He's trying to get in position to prevent this. Oh, okay, didn't really prevent much of anything, but he was able to get in there. He continues to be annoying, and Guts is now going to be forced to step away. But now, you look at Widge and Valky, look at how low they are underneath their own tower. That is what Lil Nick really wanted to get in there for, but... Well, if he doesn't run into the Mars there, then I don't think they scout that out. They don't step quite as far back, and maybe they don't get the kill. But now Jubei has the Nightmare. Brain Sap's going to be there, so they just straight up confirm the kill. And Yamsun, I'm sure he would have liked to be able to get the kill or the assist there, but... You're not really willing to take that chance. You need the first blood play, and they get it. Yeah, and it's just a little bit more regen, just straight up being bought by the black and yellow side. I think both Valkui and Ridge Widge were pretty satisfied when it came to their trades earlier on, but then uh, everything kind of goes disastrous for them as the wave just continuously gets pushed forward, and they end up taking a lot of damage from those creeps. I think Valkui, yeah, he rotated over just to get another creep on the Devour cooldown, but at the same time, Jubei is also pulling the lane back, so it feels like they're getting everything they want out of this bottom lane, while Yamsun actually can, because as soon as Valkui hits level 6, that's where the Face of Void does get heavily pressured. They're not going to be able to really operate in this lane for long if the Threat of the Doom is there, so trying to make the most of this window is Sammy... Well, he throws out the Wrath of Nature that really isn't going to do all that much at this point in the game, but it does help him maybe clear out the creep wave a little bit faster if he can go for the TP home, gets his boots, comes right back in, and you know, really no significant time lost there. That's always the benefit of this Nature's Prophet, having that sort of back and forth play, but now they're going to look for Guts. Little Nick needs to connect with the Impale. He is going to be able to do so. Can they get the Sprout down as well? No, because well, they don't see him anymore. Guts pops that invis rune and actually now walks back into the sentry. Hold on a second. One more hit. The fairy fire, very well timed. That's, that would have been a bit of an embarrassing one if he dies to that casual sentry being thrown down, but he's able to fall back. The problem is now he needs these bottle charges. Falling back, getting the bounty, healing himself up. That is going to keep him in the lane, but it buys Sammy a little bit of time. Time that doesn't really get to use all that much because the glyph prevents him from really hitting that tier one. Yeah, and that was really well played from two based actually, just allowing themselves to glyph the glyph, but yeah, that's going to happen to you. We, we see so many silencers just be unable to lane, and you look at Empyrean's inventory, uh, everything is into Boris. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a hard knock life for the position 5 support there, right? But he is getting some items for himself, now able to pick up a stick, so, you know, slowly but surely he's making... Okay, progress on itemizations, guts... 
little bit of a delayed response on that one. The arena goes down. Sammy's already outside of it, and everything. I think he got the spear damage still, but not really able to do much more than that, and that is a bit of an awkward one. That's the first arena of the game. Normally, you would like to see that play come out on one of the side lanes with Guts making that rotation, but not going to be able to do so. But now there is still a potential play to be made here. Valky gets hit up by the Nightmare. Really, the max duration that buys time for Sammy to TP in. Even Yamsun trying to get involved. And yeah, Valky, he's trying his best, but there's nowhere for him to go. He gets that path blocked off by the Sprout, and Black and Yellow bring him down. Third straight kill. Yeah, and it's this up-tempo style that Black and Yellow really need to consistently find these plays. Of course, you want to sync up those moments with the carts. It's unfortunate that Sammy wasn't able to tank with the Nature's Call just a little bit more, and then maybe this mid-tower would take a little bit more damage, but it's those opportunities that this Nature's Prophet starts to feel like a little bit of an imbalanced hero, but those are going to be few and far between, and especially with this Arcane Rune bottled up by Guts, as soon as that arena is up, you can only imagine he's going to look for an Arcane Rune play, but poor Empyrean. Just getting bullied. The creeps, though, helping him out a little bit, but not going to be enough to matter. Zero. Duels like that, I'm not sure that should be allowed. That's just a little bit rude, but it's free damage, so going to be able to pick that one up. It's... Pretty much the easiest duel win he's ever going to get. Meanwhile, down bot, Valky, he's going to get hit up here. He actually opted not to scale up that Doom just yet, and well, without it, there's really no way out. Even if he did drop the Doom onto somebody, there was probably still no way out. But Yamson's able to find the kill over in the middle lane. However, Guts does push in with the arena. A little bit of assistance there from Widge being provided, so they will turn that into a bit of a trade-off across the map, and a play for the Mars that was very much needed at this point. Guts... Trying to sort of get himself uh, back on track. You take a look at his net worth. He is the lowest net worth core in the game right now. Yeah, he's just been forced to watch a lot of these creeps get denied. If you look at the last hits, he still is very behind in that regard. A lot of his CS is just straight up coming from those treants. But you're going to have this arena again in 14 seconds. As we spoke about earlier, it was an arcane rune arena. So you can only imagine that he's going to possibly make an attempt towards that bottom lane. I think finding a kill on the Jubei would be really nice to kind of propel him forward, but that's also where when Valkyrie died before, it's just not having that support behind him in the mid lane. Sammy definitely needs to be a little bit more careful. I think he should try to avoid deaths a little bit more than he did so in that first game because it really just does not feel nice. And bottom, nicely timed on the NP. Got it. Oh. Nicely done. They get that in, and as you said, yeah, Sammy did have to sort of throw the Wrath of Nature in there, but that was damage that they desperately needed. If they don't get that kill and Valky gets the chance to turn, things get very complicated, but as it stands, they find the nice kill. Guts was able to make it a bit of an exchange mid, taking down Lil Nick, so and that arena comes into play once again, and kills like that, good on a personal level for Guts. I'm not really sure that's going to shift much of the momentum, but... The Mars needs to, again, keep this going. You see that Blink Dagger now being queued up, so... The faster the Mars can pick that up, the more aggressive Guts can be here, and aggression to this point in the game kind of feels like the overall theme, right? Eight kills in about 11 minutes, so... Neither side really wants to back off. Both of them want to be the one dictating the pace of the game. Yeah, they want to continue to get aggressive. They want to keep taking the jungle away from each other. Zero smoked up with Jubei. They want to find a smoke play. And this is something that I actually didn't like very much from Black and Yellow in the first game. They kept on doing these one to two man smokes because they're definitely a little bit less obvious. Oh, but hello, Oh, Boris. that's so nice. Can they get in? Yes, the Fiend's Grip is there. The Global Silence is going to be deployed. But Boris, okay, he does get that off just in time. He will TP home. Ooh, that was a close one. Imperion, though, pulls the trigger on the Global Silence and that gets their carry away. But he was seconds away from death. Yeah, and almost hilariously going for the Micron, the Illusion back to try and fake the grip out, and then they still go for it anyway. Everything is uh, kind of dispelled after the overwhelming odds hit, but this is a very strong push, and they know you don't have global. What are your team fight tools? It's just the arena, and Sammy. Spear okay. gonna come out, locked him down. Valky is here as well, so he could throw the Doom out. But they need more damage onto Sammy. They're not able to finish him off just yet, but the overwhelming odds come in. Which is the one to actually get the kill with the final hit. As he was able to steal those away. And now he's got his hands on the impale. Doesn't have any mana to actually use it. But if you're two-based, that went pretty well. Right? 
you tip that nah, excuse me you tp in you defend your tower which was able to steal some useful spells and you get a kill onto a very valuable target in the form of that nature's prophet so it required a little bit of effort from your team but not from some of these key heroes like the naga siren who spent that entire time farming no exactly you're just going to be able to continuously push into this jungle farm up pretty safely of course Usually when you know that Boris had already committed the song, you want to immediately look for him again. Oh. And for Nick... Nick's here, Jubei's coming in. They need to pick the right one. Oh. It's pretty easy now, or maybe not. They're still not sure, but Nick, he missed the impale. That, they had to have it. It's, Without that, they just can't get in. It's so funny. It's like the double bait, and at the same time, they find the lift into the Doom, into the spear top, and that's Yamsun getting taken out at the exact same time. Man, it, it, it's so hilarious that... The one that is directly running away, you can't even trust it anymore. These Naga, these illusion players are so sneaky, and Boris has also done a really good job when it comes to microing these illusions that he doesn't really precisely need. They're always scouting out, and it's that vision beforehand that I guess you'd be getting it from the treants if you're on the black and yellow side, but every single time Boris is spoiling a lot of these plays by just knowing where his opponents are playing. Mm -hmm. I think the important thing at this point, it takes so little for boris to make that move not in terms of effort obviously it looks easy but it's not but it takes so little in terms of how much of a delay there needs to be is sammy gonna get jumped in on the bottom lane widge is coming in imperion wants into this fight as well but sammy's gonna be able to sprout himself but there's the impale going through that tree line keeping him locked down sammy will fall and gus is gonna be able to get the kill but uh to the point on the naga siren all you need is a half seconds worth of hesitation right that's all it took for the nyx assassin to suddenly not have that guaranteed vendetta impale play he misses the stun boris walks away and then you end up losing your nature's profit over on the other side but now zero blinks in gets the duel onto silencer and well two duel wins so far both have come at imperian's expense so zero is really going for the low-hanging fruit there but you got to build up that damage somehow you might as well go for the easiest target available yeah, and Ooh. Zero is doing a pretty good job, but yeah, it's the sleep setup, but Guts the counterplay. In. This is a little bit risky, though. He's now out of mana. He is holding onto a soul ring, however, in which stolen impale, connecting on a two. That looks like it's going to really break up that fight, but up in the top lane. Huh, Boris. Well, he popped with a song, but Valky was already sort of getting hit by the projectile, so it still connects, and he does get taken down, so... Sammy is able to get away with one there. Actually, I'm not sure if it was the projectile or the burn on the orchid. That probably yeah. makes a little bit more sense now that I think about it. But either way, they do get the kill with the Song of the Siren having been expended. Yeah, and now, again, it's not that play. It's the play that comes after. If you can catch the Naga Siren in this a minute and 20 second period where she's incredibly vulnerable, <laughs> again, on the Empyrean. <laughs> this is bullying, is what it is. Zero just constantly going after Empyrean, but... E.T., you use that exact phrase in the draft. They would have to bully the absolute hell out of the silencer, and it's coming maybe a little bit later than we were sort of talking about initially, but it's still there. If they can just keep Imperion constantly on the back foot, constantly respawning, you don't have those openings, or you have fewer openings, rather, to go for that sort of big global silence play. Well, and when it comes to heroes like the silencer, the word in that same vein is threat. If you can create threat levels where suddenly you force out that global silence a few seconds before then suddenly jubei is now the strongest hero on the map and you don't have that guaranteed trade every single time that grip does get committed and okay guts that was a little uh, bit risky i don't think he realized little nick was there now it's too late the duel comes in the global's a little bit too late to counter it out is this a duel that they actually win though yes it is yamson's able to get the damage he finds the kill zero gets the duel win and oh boy guts just a little bit too much there we we see this so often with those mars is you do look for these plays because you need to be that playmaker but you need a little bit more information they did not have the vision there and unfortunately it is going to cost them their mars and now without the mars the rest of the lineup kind of has to just sit back and wait things out for a bit yeah and this is their timing they have oh. the knowledge that there is no global silence jubei has a guaranteed grip here and on boris would be awesome Oh, Boris, what kind of play can he make here? He's got his own illusions plus the Manta to try and dodge this out, but the Fiend's Grip just comes in. He didn't really make any sort of move at all, and now the duel, it's up. They've got the lockdown. I feel like you got to try something at that point. His Guts 
goes in for the arena into the Spear Sun, locking down Jubei. Valky's in here as well. Witch is going to throw out the Fade Bolt, but it's just not enough damage. And now they got to fall back, but the Nightmare is going to prevent Valky from getting away. Yamsun tried for that Chrono. The Witch was able to shut it down, so they will simply go back in, take the kill that they know that they had at their disposal as Valky will fall and. Black and yellow starting to get very aggressive here, but this aggression really is paying off. 12 to 5 in terms of the kill count, a 6k lead in Empyrean. Can he outrun Sammy? I'm not 100% sure. Empyrean. If he can outrun Sammy, I don't think he can outrun little Nick with the Vendetta pushing forward. He is trying. Where's Zero? Normally every time Empyrean dies, Zero's nearby for the duel. He's not around this time, though, but this is turning into a little bit more of a fight because Guts wants to get in there hoping to defend his teammate. Not going to be able to do so, but he does get a return kill, and now they're in on the same. The Telekinesis pulls him back into the fight. The Impale that was actually stolen away again is going to be there, and I'm getting so confused at this point. Widge seems like he has the Impale. Obviously, he doesn't have it now as he just switched up, but he has the Impale in so many fights that I'm not entirely sure he's even stealing it from the Knicks. It just seems like he has it as part of his kit here, and it does help sort of turn that fight around. Empyrean's the only one to fall. Yeah, and those are the trades that you're going to take if you're Empyrean. Of course, now that he has the global, we have that same trade where once you have grip in 25 seconds, it's not really going to matter, but it's deaths like those where the Nature's Prophet overextends a little bit too much pre-BKB that definitely start to slow you up and trip you up a little bit. Unfortunately, at the same time, two base still really haven't found a good way to get Valkui into this game yet. He's still looking for one of those good items that he could possibly go for, and I really like this from Black and Yellow. All of the heroes are so good at killing Roche. It looks like it's someone to pop the Lincolns. Yeah, there's the Orchid, and is just going to be a lot more leeway that I think Yamsun is going to be able to play with. I think that he's probably going to be the one to take it. Of course, that's a pretty good target to Doom in these fights, but now it's not going to result in a kill, so are you actually going to go for it? But top, uh, Sammy just... Okay. That was very greedy. I mean, he TPs out in the middle of the Roche attempt. That part in and of itself maybe isn't so bad, but the location he goes to, they don't have the vision. They'll lose him immediately, but now Valky going to get hit up by the Doom. Or excuse me, not the Doom, the Duel. As Zero is going to be able to win that one out, and they do turn that into a trade, but it feels like in that instance, if you're two base, you like that a little bit more. You can see the team fight recap. They get more gold, but they finally get Valky involved. He's able to throw the Doom down onto a target that they can just cleanly kill. And uh, that's what you need, because the Doom does seem to be falling into that trap we mentioned before. He's even got the Midas, so net worth is great. It's starting to pick up a little bit for that Doom, but you do need him to continue looking for opportunities to actually play aggressively. Because right now, 0-6-2 stat line is not going to do it for him. Yeah, and it's a little bit strange from Sammy, because of course he traveled a little bit further ahead than the Nyx Assassin, who should be the one scouting out for you whenever you want to make those plays. Just feels like he's going ahead of his support in a lot of these situations, which ends up in his death more often than not. But you are Nature's Prophet, you know that they don't have Doom, and it looks like you get a little bit of chip now on this Tier 3 tower, something that 2 based. Haven't really set themselves up to deal with... Oh, zero. He did you get really it anyway. It? That's... I guess so. That is much more doable than I thought it was. He doesn't even have backup there. Even with the global on top, he still just wins that duel straight up. And, uh... Well, Valky, he's not nearly as tanky as I thought that he would be in that scenario. They bring him down. There is a buyback on the Doom, but now Guts, he wants in. There's going to be the arena into the Spear Stun. Sammy, temporarily saved by the Nightmare, but he will still fall. Now, Yamsun, what the heck? Throws down the Chronosphere, but it was still in the arena, so he was getting knocked back for a moment or two. But once that arena wears off, Yamsun's in. Guts gets taken down. The Fiend Scripts onto Widge, so no steel coming out there from the Rubik, as they will lose him. And now Valky buys back, but at this point, it feels like this might be late. Boris is getting the wraparound play, however, but they need the Song of the Siren to really lock these heroes down. They're not willing to commit it. Valky dies a second time, and it's all seemingly falling apart here for the two base side. Boris is thinking about going back in, but. Onto Yamsun, that's still going to be an Aegis, and now the duel, the decision is made for them, the Nog is going to get locked down, taken out, Boris is dead, no buyback available, and this should not have turned into this kind of just base-breaking play, really, but two base, it's horrible. If they wanted to go in, they should have gone in. If they didn't want to fight, they needed to back off entirely. Instead, they picked this very weird middle ground where... You don't get any kills and you still lose too much. And of course, if you do buy back on the Nature's Prophet, but at this point, I don't think Sammy really cares. Sammy is just 
going in time and time again, tanking for his teammates. I think, really, Zero's game is just way too good at this point. He can really solo kill just about anyone. At the same time, we're still waiting for Valkyrie to do anything. I think he's really struggling and falling behind for his team right now. And you do have an Orchid on the Noggin now, but at the same time, no one was set up to defend the base there. If you had a lift on Zero when he went for the dive into the tower, it wasn't even the best chrono. A lot of those kills happened after the fact. It just feels like there's not really that much setup coming in from two base side, and they're really feeling like they're running out of damage. I think Boris, he's scrambling for this Scotty. Scotty is going to be an incredible power spike for him, but is it really going to be enough? He doesn't have a tanky item on Naga yet, so it's very realistic for him to just die in a lot of these early engagements. He's only level 13 as well. He really has not had the time that normal Nagas usually get. He needs to start the creep wave cut yesterday. And now all three of the black and yellow cores, they just bought their BKBs actually within like two or three seconds of each other. So any play that you are looking to make, you now have to make through the magic community on every single opposing core. It just makes that initiation so much more difficult, right? The Song of the Sirens, less effective. That's... Ooh, that well, play with they the Global Silence illusion. doesn't matter. Yeah, they're a little confused, but I think now they're starting to realize this may actually be the real Boris, as Lil Nick is going to make the move. There's going to be the Global Silence coming out, but again... Well, those BKBs mean they don't have to care. They jump in for the duel. Meanwhile, they get Boris trapped up inside of that Chrono. Someone has to help him. No one's here, though. Boris is just going to straight up die. I'm not really sure how much more they can do here. Yamsun picks up the double as he'll take down Empyrean. Meanwhile, Valky did drop the Doom there on to that Legion Commander, but that's not going to be enough for the kill. And now Guts has been hit by that Fiend script. They're just going to lock him down. The Bash is even coming through, so the BKB is not as great at defending him. He's forced to use the arena defensively, but Sammy, he still wants in. He's going to TP his way forward. He didn't see the initial target, so now he's just going to go on the secondary one as he, I think, accidentally TP'd onto, that, uh, onto the Doom, but... Doesn't really matter. The kill is the kill. They find it. And now all of a sudden, you're looking at the Mars, really the lone defender at the particular moment in time. Empyrean will respawn, but he does so without the global. And their buyback status is very poor at the worst possible opportunity, really. They need these heroes back in. Boris is going to respawn, so they have the Song of the Siren, but if they lose any of these heroes, they're not coming back. There's smoke up as well, just trying to look for anyone or anything, but I think, unfortunately, this is just going to be a free rack, so look for the fight here. Okay, okay. got the thing. Jube down, Yamsun forced to actually not pop the BKB. That was the shard upgrade from Zero, giving him that temporary magic immunity, so they hold the BKB. They finish off the bottom lane of racks. Boris doesn't want to let them go, though. There's going to be the song. They've caught out two, actually three. Do they see Yamsun in the tree line, though? I'm not sure they do. So they may just have to go after Sammy, but Sammy's going to pop the BKB. Yamsun actually goes for his own, jumps into the fight. The bashes are coming out onto Valky, so the Doom has to fall back. Boris, though, is the real target, and they do jump in onto him. Boris will fall. Zero has to sacrifice himself, but at this point, this is a very solid fight for them, or maybe it's not. Sammy gets picked off. Little Nick sticks around too long. He will fall, and now they cancel the TP on the faces, forward, uh, faces void. Yamsun... There's no Chrono here either, so he just has to kind of try and stand his ground. That's going to make things complicated. Guts in with the arena into the spear stun, picks up the kill. And if you're black and yellow, you get the racks. That's what they wanted in the first place, but that's a lot of kills to give up on the back end. Definitely. And now, what is your choice? Do you decide to wait it out? Do you decide to go for just the next engagement? I think with Roshi spawning in a minute and 20 seconds, we could see Black and Yellow reset there. But that's also where they do have Chrono in eight seconds. They could definitely just immediately start running at their opponents. And then I don't really know what you do on the two base side. They need a few more items. They really need Boris to get any of this gold. It's unfortunate all those kills happen with the Naga solely being dead. And Kieran is, is back in action. Oh, man. Oh. Zero on the back line, quickly picking off Valky. And, well... Nice nightmare, too. Oh, oh they got crap. the Fiend's Grip. Global, though, very nicely placed. It's going to cancel that one out, and that should allow their lineup to fall back. Zero's still trying to chase, though. Like is coming back up, but on the back line, Guts jumped in. He'll take down Lil' Nick, pops his BKB. Fiend's Grip actually was stolen by Witch, so they have the lockdown onto the LC. Can they take down both of these kills, though? The damage is being a little bit split. They'll go for the easier kill, but that sets up Yansam in for the Chronosphere, connecting onto four. Wrath of Nature flies through as well, and it's all going to go to hell for two base. They get completely annihilated. Yamsun picks up the Ultra, and yeah, that's the GG. There was really one move you could not afford to make. Do not get caught in the Chrono, 
And Yamsun just slams the door shut. Man, this Doom Hero really looks bad. <laughs> like, it, it just continues to struggle time and time again. I think it was set up better than really a lot of the other Doom so far in the tournament, but holy hell, this hero is just not getting off to a good start and is just falling prey to everything. This wasn't even a game where Valkyrie was sacked. I think in the Tide, you give him a little bit more of a break because he did have a little bit more of a slow start, but at the same time, it just feels like he never found his Doom target. He never found the hero that he wanted to find. It was always, I think, Nick getting on top of him, and I think Nick is the one that really played the best on black and yellow side. He was getting in a lot of those backlines. Him and Zero, to be honest, just always finding their own initiations for a lot of those jumps entirely blind as well. I think both of them just did an incredible job of executing this strategy of really just global, just running around from space to space to space, setting up kills. Of course, you'll love whenever Zero can set up kills for himself, but I think Sammy and Lil Nick syncing up with each other so many times beautifully just felt like they could create this incredible threat across the map that two base didn't really have any options to deal with. We saw time and time again Imperian being forced to pop that global not on the grip or using it to only cancel the grip, and then immediately we have that secondary and third initiation coming in from Black and Yellow, and two base don't don't have the tools if they're the ones getting initiated on. They were the team that really needed to start a lot of these fights, and unfortunately, they just didn't have enough. Yeah, and I mean, you do have to give some credit to Guts. You take a look at the stat line there, 11 and 3 on that mid Mars. He plays it really uh, about as well as you could have expected, but he was the only one capable of really doing anything. And to, to harp on that Doom just that little bit more, because at this point, it kind of feels like we need to. Not Valky himself, he did really the best that he could, but this Doom hero. So often when this hero fails, you take a look at the build, right? He's got the phase boots, he got the Midas. Between the Midas and the Devour, you're going to generate a lot of gold. But to what to what end? For what purpose are you building this gold? Because so far, when the Doom has failed, the answer to that question has been absolutely zero purpose whatsoever. You don't get the Blink Dagger, you're not initiating. By the time you do start throwing out Dooms, it's onto heroes that you can't even kill. So... I don't know. If the hero is going to continue to get picked up, ET, something has to change in terms of the play style because this just isn't working. I want Sayro right back. He was the Doom. <laughs> he was the guy, you know. Mm -hmm. He was the one who was, you know, 2,000 net worth ahead of Brile and Tomato, and you wouldn't really bat an eye. But so many Dooms, as soon as they start to fall behind, and of course, Valkyrie was 0 3 out of the lane. There was just too many good rotations coming in from Sammy. It just feels like it's so hard to crawl back, where if you're ahead, this hero feels great with all of these items, and you actually have the space to play with it, but unfortunately, we keep on seeing dooms that just fall behind their opponents, and then they run out of gas, because on paper, why can y'all have done the best saves? They really are going to have to play incredibly defensively if you're the one starting these engagements, but aside from the arena, it just felt like they had so few opportunities to actually get their team fight going. Yeah, so few opportunities, and... Their theoretical team fight power either gets forced out early or, in a lot of instances, just used too broken up from each other. So, in theory, this lineup has some strength to it, but two base just kind of get really outplayed and outmaneuvered. So, black and yellow able to get themselves a win, just like the previous series. They drop the first game, they win the second, they come out of the day with two points. That puts them on three wins overall and maintains just that tiniest little bit of separation. They're one win ahead of Arkosh and two based so we said this series had a lot of implications at the end of the day the one one split kind of just keeps us exactly where we were but that's still a tense situation for both squads you don't want to be that lone team that gets knocked out of the group stage and I'm sure we'll talk about it when it happens, but now the Simply Two-based Arkosh series is going to be incredibly weighted for whether or not those teams get actually eliminated. And then it's also where Black and Yellow need to be incredibly careful. If they go 0-4 in the next, what, two series that they have, then they could end up in a uh, three-way tie between who gets eliminated and NA. Unfortunately, they're all NA teams, but, you know, what can you do, as Black and Yellow would say? Yeah, somebody's got to go home uh, prior to the playoffs. So these two squads hoping it's not them. But for now, we don't really have a definitive answer. So with that in mind, that is our final series coming to an end here with the 1-1 draw. So we are going to be shutting things down in just a little bit. Do want to give a reminder, though, for tomorrow's matches, we are going to be starting uh, a couple hours earlier because we do have uh, an additional series to be played. So we're going to be starting at 1 p.m. Pacific time uh, tomorrow afternoon.
But with that in mind, we are shutting things down, E.T. Another uh, another couple of series in the books here. Any closing thoughts uh, for this day's action? Uh, well, I just looked it up, and the first series tomorrow is actually that series. It is oh. Two Based versus Arkosh. So see you guys tomorrow. Nice. That's going to be the day to watch. We get to start it off with some high stakes stuff which i know that sounds weird talking about the bottom of the group but that's always where the best stuff happens if you're in the middle of the pack no offense to the teams in the middle right now but you're a little you're a little boring because you're kind of safe right we want to see teams fighting for their lives in this event um figuratively by the way uh we're not we're not doing anything like that bts does not condone uh, any death matches real or otherwise uh so you know just thought I'd cover our asses on a legal basis, because you never know. People are crazy. But for now, we are going to be hopping out of here before I say some other weird stuff that I'll have to sort of walk back immediately. So thank you all so much for watching. We will see you again tomorrow, a little bit earlier, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Until then, uh, enjoy the rest of your evening, and good night.